um, is going to be recording it. Um, and uh, this is to make it available to people who are not able to join us during the day. Uh, obviously, because of time zones, live events like this are rather tricky. And uh, we wanted it to be convenient for our hosts in Bethlehem, uh, where it is now early evening. And, uh, and because it's dark in Bethlehem, uh, Jack will be uh, using some pre-recorded interviews to make it as realistic as, as, as we can. So because it's being recorded, feel free to turn off your uh, video if you don't want your face appearing. Um, second, uh, I just want to mention that this uh, is an interactive tour, um, but because of so many people involved here, uh, it's simplest if we can ask our questions using the chat function that you see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Jeanette and I will be monitoring these questions and uh, posing them to Jack. Uh, we will um, be muting everyone to keep out uh, distracting uh, noises. Now, thirdly, we will be um, also inserting some additional information into the chat, uh, uh, web links and so forth that you can use. Um, all of this will be coming to you uh, in an email after the tour. Uh, we will send you a link so that you can forward it to other people and, and pass on uh, what you've learned today. Um, so uh, we will try to restrict ourselves to, uh, to an hour. Uh, there will be some opportunity if you want to stay on and continue the conversation. Jack has graciously uh, um, made his time available for, for uh, some of that. Uh, but the formal part will, uh, will consist of uh, his tour with a few opportunities uh, to, uh, for questions. Um, so um, I think I will uh, back off here and let uh, Jack uh, host this tour. And again, thank you, Jack, for making your time available. Uh, it's a busy time for you uh, in Bethlehem, uh, but uh, you have uh, chosen to, to be with us today and uh, we feel very honored. So I'm just gonna let you uh, take over from here and um, uh, welcome again. Well, thank you. Thank you, Byron. Thank you, Janet, for uh, hosting me uh, in this webinar, which basically is uh, another introduction to Bethlehem Bible College. I uh, greet you from, uh, actually, uh, I wish I want to say Bethlehem, but I had to go home because it is too late here. It's uh, 7 p.m., but uh, I can say I can greet you from Bethlehem and in Jerusalem, where I reside, and Bethlehem, where Bethlehem Bible College is. And uh, it's my honor to be with you all. I realize and uh, no, I, I can notice some uh, faces that I know personally. So I'm glad to see you here. But as well, uh, brothers and sisters who have joined us for uh, this introduction to Bethlehem Bible College and tour, virtual tour. Like uh, Byron had said, I was wishing that I can actually do it uh, uh, live, uh, walking through the campus with you and showing you around, but as it is uh, dark in Bethlehem at this moment, I couldn't do it. Uh, so we had to pre-record a few videos, especially for you actually, these are not, uh, maybe later on we'll use them for other uh, uh, showing them groups. Uh, so let's say this is the inauguration of this virtual tour that was done specifically and specially for your eyes. So uh, please enjoy uh, first uh, the uh, first tour. It is, um, it's, it's a bit long. I mean, this is the only video, the tour would be the longer one. So bear with us and uh, try to mute everything around you so that you can watch it. And I, I will be playing it and later on we can uh, do some, re I'll do some remarks and we'll do questions and answers. Then I will be showing you another couple of short videos of our students uh, who will be sharing testimonies and a couple of other short videos from our teachers uh, uh, concerning programs we run. Uh, I hope everybody understands me well. I, one, one function you have in your screen, you could do reactions. So you can do something like this if you see on my window, you know, if you're happy, you can show you're happy. If you're uh, uh, enjoying this show, you can clap for me. Uh, I don't know if you see it. So you can join in interactions like this. And later on, there'll be some raising hands and some answering questions and we can talk about other things. So let's uh, watch the first video, which is basically a virtual tour 
of Bethlehem Bible College. Enjoy this tour and uh, let me know later on. We'll talk about uh, some of the things you guys have seen. Give me a few seconds. I'll be uh, playing this video. friends welcome to Bethlehem Bible College welcome to our campus here in Bethlehem as you notice we are located on Hebron Road which connects between Jerusalem and Hebron at the south of Jerusalem and not far away from the barrier wall that Israel has built basically to separate between Jerusalem and Bethlehem but at the same time it just made Bethlehem a hard place to be yet we are located in a strategic area where on a main street in Bethlehem everybody knows us everybody sees us we want to be a beacon of light we want to provide service and be there to be a witness about God's love for our people and the nations so welcome to the campus of Bethlehem Bible College walk with me this is our oldest building that was purchased back in 1999 for the purpose of educating leaders in biblical understanding and ministry and after that God had blessed us with two more buildings that we were able to build and now all of this campus is used for the training of leaders in Palestine and beyond our oldest building is almost 100 years old it was bought from Bible Land Society uh, back in 1990 and after purchasing it, we had to do a major renovation inside of it. So come and see how beautiful is this old building that God has blessed us with, together with the other buildings that we have here at the campus in Bethlehem. Walk with me. As we come into this reception area, this is where most of the administration happened. Yet, this is also where we welcome a lot of our visitors. So as they come here, they are also are seeing how God has been faithful to us through the partnership of so many people along the years that has been praying, has been supporting the work and the ministry of Bethlehem Bible College. So what you see in this building is mainly the administration. This is where people are welcomed. And from here, we take them to the most of the departments that we have here at Bethlehem Bible College. So walk with me to show you around. Please enjoy uh, this building. This is a hundred years, like I said to you, building that was built back in the 1923. And now, as after many years, it's mainly used for the purpose of educating and training students for the work of ministry. These doors are the originals, actually. This is what we call the Tree of Honor, just on my left. And this is where we honor a lot of our partners, churches, ministries, and organizations that have been supporting us along the years. Many of them have been faithful donors and prayer warriors on behalf of Bethlehem Bible College. And again, we always invite people to join the scores of people that have been partnering with us along the years. This is the external part of our campus. In this campus, we provide trainings, education, degrees for so many students who are studying, whether it's a diploma degree or a bachelor's degree or a master's of arts degree in ministry and leadership. Yet, we provide more than academic studies. God blessed us with so much facility here in Bethlehem that we are able to provide ministries in various means. For example, our middle building here is used to produce media that will change the community. And we have witnessed along the years how much our production have changed, not just the society that we're living in, but at the same time, help the church to grow in so many ways. At the same time, in the middle building, we provide ministry to the poor and needy. Through our daughter ministry, the Shepherd Society. The Shepherd Society was established back in 1995 for the purpose of helping families, individuals, 
who cannot afford the medicine or utilities or so many needs that they have. You know, in Bethlehem, we struggle a lot every time there is a political issue or a pricing because most of the people here depend, a lot of them depend on tourism. Like nowadays, the unemployment rate had actually been raised to 60%. And this is difficult because when you talk that tourism is no longer uh, something available for the area of Bethlehem, that means a lot of people are out of work. And that's why Bethlehem Bible College many years ago had provided this ministry and we continue to do so with the help and the administration of so many people that are leading this amazing ministry called the Shepherd Society. We also have a guest house where we host our friends, our visitors, Christian groups that want to come and visit Bethlehem, visit the Holy Land. We are able now to host up to 70 to 80 people who would be coming and welcoming here in Bethlehem to stay for as long as they want. So plan your next visit to be with us at the guest house of Bethlehem Bible College. And now I will take you more into our newest building, which we call Bishara Awad building. It's a center, it's an academic center that we had established for our own educational purposes, but at the same time to empower the community. Come with me to this amazing center that we have here in Bethlehem. We are now at the Bashar Awad building, which is basically our academic center. We were able to call this building out after our founder, Dr. Bashar Awad, who actually founded this college back in 1979. When he founded the place, of course, we were not here at this campus. He started in a school not far away, actually. It was called the Mennonite School in Bejala, Hope School, where he was the headmaster of that school. And when he began that program Notice that Mennonite. he then called Bethlehem Bible College together with many leaders around him really were affirming that this is what we need here in Palestine and now after 42 years God had blessed us with so much things including this amazing campus Dr. Bishar Awad we honor him not just because he built buildings but at the same time because he left a legacy legacy of scores of leaders and students that were trained here at the Bethlehem Bible College at the same time for the voice of evangelical Christians from Palestine that is now heard all over the globe. As you look around me, these are our precious students who came here to the library, not just to take books, but to continue their educational process together with the help of our amazing librarian and those students and those teachers that are eager to learn how to serve God and how to build his kingdom in many ways. Welcome to our library. I'm welcoming you to our auditorium. This auditorium could sit up to 200 people and it is used basically for chapels, seminars, trainings, and there's so many activities that we run here at Bethlehem Bible College, which focuses on empowering leaders, empowering men and women for the work of ministry, for changing the society, and at the same time, to become in their own term leaders in our community. This is our second floor, and here we welcome our students, our staff and faculty, and many others, including visitors, to come and dine with us at our cafeteria. We have an amazing kitchen, amazing hall that could actually host up to 150 people at the same time. At the same time, this middle floor has our Star Bazaar, which is a, a gift shop that we are using for the internal support of Bethlehem Bible College. The revenues goes into providing scholarships and help the students and the operation of the college. At the same time, we have several classes here and there, including the computer center and another uh, lecture room at this level. Again, we are at the academic center. This is where most of our teachers have their offices. We have our 
assistant to the academic dean, online department, administrative staff, the MA degree, the tourism studies, the peace studies department, which is our newest program that we're offering here at the Bethlehem Barber College. I am here in our middle building. The middle building houses our media center, the Shepherd Society, volunteer housing, student housing at the same place. Through our media programs, we are reaching to millions of people, not just in Palestine, but all over the globe, specifically in the Middle East of North Africa, where we provide productions that changes the society, things that aims to really empower women, serve children, and at the same time, empower the Christian communities, not just in Palestine, but all over the Middle East and North Africa. I hope and pray that you uh, enjoyed uh, this tour, which was done specifically first uh, and foremost for your eyes, for you to see and watch. And uh, you have to realize it took me over two hours to do this. Now, what you saw in uh, 10 or 11 minutes uh, was a two, uh, two hours of me recording and probably two days of editing and working through uh, the videos that uh, my team had worked on. So I hope you enjoyed it. I, uh, I would love to interact with you over any uh, questions regarding, I, I mainly focused on this, uh, in this uh, video on the campus and what we're doing through our campus in Bethlehem and uh, uh, basically to show you, be able to show you some of the faces, some of the students and the activities, uh, especially during these days, you know, we're still in the Corona kind of like, I don't want to call it a season, but we're still under this uh, thick cloud of Corona where uh, we still have to be cautious. Uh, as you saw in some of the videos, everybody's wearing, still wearing masks. Uh, you know, we have been doing social distancing, you know, the holes we're using, uh, we spread the students uh, afar, uh, uh, you know, because it it's really still there around us in this area, as I heard also still around uh, Canada. And uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, when I was recording this, basically to show you as if you are with us there again, you know, it's different when you uh, interact with the students and the teachers and you be there with us yet, at least we were able to do some a little thing uh, just for you to be able to uh, be introduced and get to know a deeper, uh, uh, the in a deeper way, the Bethlehem Bible College. So um, I want to uh, hand back to Byron and Janet in case you have any Q and A Q questions where we can talk. And, and, and after this, I want to show you uh, the students and a uh, couple of teachers talking about special programs that probably uh, this is where you can be part of, especially the PISA studies. Janet and Byron, the mic is with you. Janet, are you uh, going to field these questions or should I? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you for those who've uh, put uh, questions into the chat. Uh, we, we have several questions here. Uh, um, what are the languages of classroom instruction? And uh, what about, do you have also have international students at your college? Uh, those are the first two questions. Good, good very good questions. Uh, the, the, the answer is our main, our medium uh, of uh, teaching is Arabic. Uh, especially in the local programs like the Bachelors of Arts in, in Biblical Studies or Theology, the Masters of Arts in Ministry and Leadership, and the Diploma in Education. Uh, these the programs are done mainly in Arabic, as well as the online degree, which we offer to about 70 to 80 students every semester, uh, Arab students from around the globe. 
Yet, we do have two other programs that are taught mainly in English. At the moment, we are teaching the tourism studies in English, and they are mainly for locals, but if there are foreigners or internationals who live in Bethlehem, they are able to take these courses, which basically relates to the land, geography, history, biblical history of the Holy Land. The other programs that are done in English is the Peace Studies program, which is uh, a program that we have uh, rejuvenated, you know, revived again uh, recently, and we started with courses that you can take online, and one of them just started, and we have over 30 students in that class, and we are about to start the second class, and that's actually open for any student from around the globe to take it online. After uh, some students take these courses, we are doing courses here in the campus as well. Jack, uh, could you also say how, ma how many students you have uh, uh, on site there and how many of those are local? Well, uh, most of our students are locals, to be honest. I think in the tourism department, we have only two internationals. Uh, you have to take in, in, in consideration that, uh, you know, with the regulations, nobody actually is being able to come into the country because of corona, uh, except, you know, uh, diplomats and some students who are studying specific issues and others. But uh, we have uh, about 60 to 70 students who are taking undergraduate programs. We have about 20 who are taking uh, in the campus in Bethlehem, uh, I'm talking, because you have to put in mind that we also have a campus in Nazareth and we have an online campus and each uh, each one of them cater to different kind of students, uh, similar programs in Nazareth and in Bethlehem, but basically because of localities and location, we provide it in a different way. In Nazareth, we have about 45 students. Online, we have about 70 students. So altogether, we come up to over 200 students. Thank you. Um, somebody asked about the Peace Studies Department. I think uh, you'll be uh, saying more about this a little bit later in the tour, right, uh, Jack? So I'll leave that question for now. Um, what are the requirements to send students to Bethlehem Bible College? Well, if, there, if these are students who will be studying uh, in the online degree uh, in Arabic, it's basically high school uh, is the minimum. If it's a master's degree, then it's a BA degree, and that is a minimum. Uh, if it is uh, the tourism department, then a, a, a BA or a diploma in university is the minimum requirement. Okay. Uh, somebody else is asking about uh, the unemployment. How is the larger community dealing with 60% unemployment? That's hard for us to imagine here. It is still, still difficult, uh, Byron. You know, lately, you have to realize, you know, from uh, city to city in Palestine, it's different. Bethlehem, particularly, uh, depends a lot on, on tourism because of the, uh, you know, because it's Bethlehem, like uh, uh, where tourists would like to come and see the major square, be at the church and uh, visit there. And sadly speaking, I mean, uh, uh, because of the regulations for the year and uh, seven months now, actually more, uh, tourism is, is really kind of like cut. We barely get any tourists now there are few groups that are coming in but they come under a lot of control and they're even watched and uh, monitored where they're going because of everything uh, so people are to be to be honest with you a lot of people are depending on handouts and this is one thing that we were able to help some fam some families through our daughter ministry uh, the shepherd society but the situation is there. It's, it's very difficult, to be honest with you. And I cannot say something good about it. It's still hard. 60% uh, is, I would say, the minimum percentage of un unemployment around Bethlehem. In other cities like Hebron, uh, Ramallah, actually, it's less than that. It's 25% uh, probably the unemployment, which is still bad and hard. But, uh, you know, saying 60% is really very difficult you know it looks like a number but when you when you are at the campus uh, especially every day i'm i'm around and seeing families families that i know that they were used to be uh, well off i mean they they did have shops they have money they have things and they come for us to beg for food or helping them with medicine or things it just really breaks our hearts uh we have a couple of questions about funding uh you, you uh how is the college funded and and what about tuition fees uh, how can people afford that and um how much does it cost well good question uh, first of all uh 
we don't send any student home because they're not able to pay. You know, our, we, are, we are a Christian institution, we're a Bible college, and uh, we don't let tuition uh, actually uh, forbid or kind of like become a burden or a st stumbling block in front of any students to study. Uh, we try to find scholarships for them, fund them, and uh, whatever the students pay sometimes, even if it's the maximum of tuition, does not come even up to 15% of the real cost. Uh, you know, students don't pay more than $1,000 or 1000 US dollars uh, a year, where the cost on the college is about $8,000 a year per student. And uh, uh, funding comes from outside the, the, the world, you know, people like, uh, you know, your, yourselves and others who would chip in, uh, you know, different individuals, churches, uh, foundations, that 50% uh, of my time for basically goes into communicating with these people, our friends from around the globe, you know, basically um, about 60% of our funding comes from the US, and then the 30% or so is uh, from Europe, uh, Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and other localities like Germany. Jack, how are we doing for time? Uh, we have a couple of other questions here. Uh, shall we save them or uh, should we go on? Well, if, uh, uh, if I can uh, show you uh, uh, the program, I mean, let's, let's take the questions that we have so that we can uh, uh, okay. then take questions related to the other Also questions. related to the employment uh, question, there's uh, uh, a question about the tourism graduates. That's a vocational program that you have. Are they able to find work and uh, are they limited to the West Bank or can they go outside? Well, uh, the tourism students are 70% uh, limited to the West Bank, and there are those who are able to get permission to do uh, tour guiding in Israel, Palestine. The issue is, I mean, even the the tours, the tours, uh, what they call the tour guides in Israel, are not working. So <laughs> it's uh, it's difficult on both sides because of the issues. Uh, on the Israeli side, you know, there is social warfare, war, uh, welfare, and they're being able to be helped. Yet on the Palestinian side, it's that the situation is is much difficult. So the the help is 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 little, and um, hopefully, you know, at the time they finish this uh, current study, I mean, uh, in few months we'll have the exam for the tourism students, where if they pass, then they can are able to take uh, tours around, which means you know, till tourism comes, maybe next year. I mean, they're talking now about November, as the borders hopefully will be open for tourists and tour groups to come into the country again. So let's pray that with that will materialize and things will be much much better. A big part of the tourist uh, uh, industry is uh, gift shops in Bethlehem, and uh, Bethlehem Bible College does have a gift shop. Um, the question is, do you ship internationally? Uh, possibly, uh, Byron. We do a lot. I mean, actually, uh, uh, the gift shop pr provides about f five to eight percent of our annual uh, need. I mean, I would say a little five percent of our annual need. And uh, during Corona time, you know, we didn't have any tour groups coming into the gift shop. So basically, it was mainly doing shipping. We still do shipping all the time. We've done shipping. And it's uh, it's really one one area where you can uh, support the Bath and Barbie College through. So yeah, we and uh, we, we uh, will post some links uh, by the time we're done here uh, so that you can go and, and visit the, the shop. Uh, one more question here about uh, Christian churches. Which Christian churches are in Bethlehem and what is their relationship to Bethlehem Bible College? Uh, in Bethlehem, you know, this is Bethlehem, so every church wants to have a church in Bethlehem. <laughs> so uh, anything you think of is there, uh, whether it's Catholic, Orthodox, Evangelical, Protestant, Lutheran. Uh, I, I think except the Mennonite, you don't have a church there. <laughs> That's the only church we don't have here. I think there is some representation, but not uh, not really as a church. And uh, so we have a relationship with all of them. Bethlehem Bible College is non-denominational which means uh, really every student who comes from any church is welcome. We open relationship with most. Now, uh, I have to say the truth that our statement of faith uh, subscribes more to the Protestant, uh, I would say, statements of faith in terms of believing in the Bible as the, the main kind of like uh, document that we use or uh, uh, our, our reference, our uh, foundation. Yet, uh, for those who want to study, they come from all kind of churches. So we have a relationship with most of the churches in Bethlehem. OK, 
Yeah, I think uh, this would be a good time to uh, continue on with uh, introducing us to some of your people. Sure. Now, uh, uh, it's it's noted to say that although I am with the Christian Missionary Alliance, which many people in Canada knows, uh, the Bethlehem Bible College is not the CMA. It's really uh, most of my staff and, and friends uh, or teachers or staff basically represent several other churches uh, in the Bethlehem Bible College. So let me show you uh, some. Do you like to hear some students uh, speak? Uh, if you like to say, just give me a thumbs up or encourage me, guys. Friends. Okay, let's do this. Whatever. However, I do. Anthony. Uh, I'm, hello, my name is Anthony. Uh, I'm a second year student at Bethlehem Bible College. Um, Sorry, Jack, since we can't see the video. You may Oops. have to. You may have to uh, go out and come back in again. There we are. I may believe my second year student at Bethlehem Bible Company. Uh, I'm a second. Hello, my name is Anthony. Uh, I'm a second year student at Bethlehem Bible College. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I've been always wanting to like create a change. As um, I may believe Gandhi once said, "Be the change you wish to see in the world." And from that quote, ever since I've always wanted to create a change in the world, even in Palestine or outside Palestine or in a glo globally or whatever. However, I do believe that Bethlehem Bible College is the actual good way for me to do that. And without it, I don't think I would ever achieve my goal. Well, as a Christian Palestinian myself, we do get a lot of um, problems. It's a really problematic situation, the one we're in, due to the occupation of a Palestine. Sorry, sorry, that's my... Fine. <laughs> whatsoever. However, um, going through checkpoints, we have to uh, apply for... Uh, permissions in order to go to Israel, in order to visit our Holy Land, in order to visit just the Palestine itself. So it's actually pretty hard for Palestinians, just as myself and like every other like students at Bethlehem Bible College, including teachers, staff, etc. So yeah, it's been a hard go for us as Palestinians, but hopefully someday it'll be better. The pandemic has impacted us all uh, in a very negative way. Uh, it has impacted me as a being a student, as taking online classes instead of actually coming to school and visiting my friends, looking at my classes, looking at my teachers, asking them questions. So it has been a pretty uh, a negative impact on me as a student. And also, as I believe may for be for, teach, for teachers, for staff, and all the members of the society as well. I believe that as a Christian minority here, since we are actually less than 1% of Christians in Palestine, I believe that Bethlehem Bible College has actually impacted all our lives as me as students all that study online and that study in person with me, first year, second year, third year, and fourth year students, um, has actually impacted us a lot and has actually made us understand more about not only theologically, however, how the world actually works. So I'm, pur I'm purely grateful for Bethlehem Bible College and I'm purely grateful for everyone watching. Hello, my name is Anthony. Uh, I'm a second year student at Bethlehem. Was that clear? Were you able to see it? Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the second video is from an another lady that uh, also part uh, of our programs. Let me know if you see it. If not, then I'll uh, do it again. Hey, my name is Jenny Hadwe. I'm a second year student uh, studying theology in Bethlehem Bible College. I came to this college to study languages, but there's something told me that I should go inside and know so much better than on Jesus and theology and th these things. So I'm studying now theology second year. Um, I'm hoping that I will get bigger and knowing God so much better than I have been before. As a Christian person living in Palestine, it's hard for us to live in Palestine under occupation and we can go to Jerusalem where Jesus has been going a lot of places and we, we need permission to go to Jerusalem and a lot of places. It's hard for us to live here. We can't do anything we want, we, but we're still Christian and Jesus is still with us. So it's a good thing. 
Uh, the college had made a lot of improve uh, about Christianity in Bethlehem, and they changed a lot of people. They lied their heart about Jesus, and they might they let people know about Jesus a lot of things. Especially me, I wasn't in a good relationship with Jesus, and when I get to the college, um, I get out of the box, and I know Jesus much better now. And I hope they can do the same to other people out there who need God in their lives. I hope that my brother and sisters are around the world that who know about us to share about us and to know what to to make us bigger and to pray for us and to be with us every time every second and every sec every time they pray for us thank you that was Jen that was generally Hadwe who is uh, from uh, Bethlehem here uh, these were uh, testimonies from uh, students of ours, and uh, I just uh, wanted to show you, you know, the faces of uh, a sample, actually. I wish I can do interview with most of the students that we have, but uh, it's difficult as basically uh, time limits us. And uh, for you, our, our main concern is uh, to give you a taste. Uh, first, to encourage you to pray, to encourage you to come, to encourage you to find ways of how uh, you can connect in a deeper level. If you are a pastor, probably uh, you want to talk with Byron and Janet on how uh, uh, your church could contribute more towards the goals and purposes of Bethlehem Bible College. And uh, Janet and Byron will be sharing with you more about how you can do this through uh, Mennonite Church Canada. But uh, like you heard from our students, most than anything else, prayers are needed you know especially that the situation is not improving you know i wish i can say good things about the situation around still very difficult i mean living uh, in palestine is uh, is uh, as hard as ever you know students like these people that you saw i mean they have uh, a great hearts they love the lord they love the word of god they love their people yet uh, just just imagine, I don't know, I mean, I've been to Canada, I've been to where Byron is in Manitoba and other places, and, you know, uh, you open your eyes and you put yourself in your car and you could drive for hours with no one asking you where you're going or what you're doing. Yet here, just imagine students like these, they are not able to even drive five minutes outside of Bethlehem freely. And, you know, it's it's difficult. It's really difficult. So for them to choose to come to Bethlehem Bible College and, and get equipped with the Word of God, get equipped with such education. Uh, and uh, a lot of them have a calling to stay in the country. Now, I cannot guarantee you that everyone that comes across our doors and, and, and get a degree, they will be staying in the country. Honestly, I've lost, I've uh, ran out of what you call uh, logic. To provide for those who come to me and say you know we are departing we're leaving we are immigrating because it's uh, really it's, it's it's not easy yet those who remain to come remain because of their calling to the lord calling to the ministry calling to the people and chose to stay here to serve and be witnesses be light for our people here in palestine if you have any questions, we can take a couple of them before I go into the other section, which is basically talking about two programs. One of them is called Christ at the Checkpoint, and the other one is the Peace Studies Department or Peace Studies at Bethlehem Bible College. Jack, I wonder, uh, there aren't a lot of um, more questions in the chat. I wonder if you could go directly into those uh, uh, um, programs, and then we can have more questions at the end. Would that be okay? Uh, people are, is it, there was one uh, question eager to know about the Peace Studies program in particular. Let's do, Let's do this. Hello, and greetings from Bethlehem. Uh, my name is Andrew Bush. I'm the director of the Bethlehem Institute of Peace and Justice here at Bethlehem Bible College. And I'm really to ha happy to have this time to share with you a few highlights of the Institute of Peace and Justice. Um, uh, Bethlehem Bible College founded the Bethlehem Institute of Peace and Justice with the hope of promoting peace here in Palestine and Israel, but also of equipping and encouraging peacemakers around the world. 
part of our goal, besides conveying some of the basic uh, building blocks of peace studies, is to promote the, uh, the relevance and the sense of reasonableness of peacemaking. Our society, societies often foster the idea that violence and force is really the only way that problems will be solved. And yet, Jesus called us to be peacemakers. And really, if we look historically at the results of peacemaking, they've been much more effective than war and violence in achieving peace in societies around the world. Our programs are uh, here are academic, and we have programs that are oriented both towards undergraduate university students and graduate students. And currently, we have an online course, the Introduction to Peacemaking and Justice in the Context of Palestine, uh, which is running right now. We have 30 students in it, uh, enrolled in it. It's taught in English. Our students are from Liberia, Scotland, England, Holland, Canada, the United States, and the Philippines. And these are seasoned experience uh, peace workers who are enrolled in our course. We'll be offering the follow-up to this course in the spring semester. These are 14-week uh, full university courses, and we encourage you to go online at the BIPJ.org and check out our courses and uh, consider enrolling in our course uh, in the spring. Some of the students have commented that these were the exact this was the exact course they were looking for who are enrolled right now because they wanted to hear more from Palestinian Christians. In fact, our professors are primarily uh, primar uh, Palestinian Christians, and these are men and women, women who have endured in peacemaking in spite of the conflict uh, that they have been living in. So their voices aren't, um, how should I say it, artificial. They're speaking out of deep experience of the cost of conflict and the value of peace. So we really in, uh, invite you to uh, join us. Also, we have a certificate program which includes the fall and spring course, as well as a two-week summer intensive uh, on site here in Bethlehem. Also, we have upcoming a joint master's degree, which we'll soon be announcing with another university uh, in Canada. So that will give you the opportunity to study with us and a Canadian university and achieve a full uh, master's degree. So thank you for uh, listening for these few minutes, and we hope that you'll connect with us in making peace in our world. This was uh, Dr. Andrew Bush, who uh, joined our faculty. Andrew uh, is a professor, was a professor at uh, Eastern University near Philadelphia, uh, working with people like uh, Ron Seiler and others. And uh, lately, he joined our team, and uh, specifically leading uh, the Peace, Peace Institute of Bethlehem Bible College. The last video we'll be showing you, and then we'll take more uh, questions from you. Christ at the Checkpoint uh, is a conference we do here at uh, the Bible College every two years. Uh, we began in 2010. Uh, and the idea was, let us talk about the reality in Palestine, uh, reality under occupation, uh, through the lens of our faith. And uh, this was prompted by the fact that many uh, of our sisters and brothers in Christ who come from around the world, uh, we found out that they hold to a theological view uh, that uh, supports uh, the occupation, whether it's uh, the explicit Christian Zionism or simply the belief that the modern state of Israel is a, 
uh, uh, the continuation or is the same as biblical Israel uh, and so on. And over the years, we would have these conversations uh, on an individual basis with leaders or with groups. And eventually, we decided to hold a conference. In the beginning, we thought, let's talk about the theology of the land. And then we grew it into uh, a more broader com uh, conference that talks about different topics. We called it Christ at the Checkpoint. And so far, we've held five of them. Uh, we were surprised by the enthusiasm and the support of many who simply said, we did not know that Palestinian Christians existed. Uh, and uh, were willing to engage in theological discussions and biblical discussions with us about issues like the promised land, uh, the people of God. But more importantly, from our perspectives, issues related to justice and peacemaking. Uh, our conferences were attended by hundreds, uh, each version. Uh, some would have 500, 400, others even 600. Uh, and uh, it, this uh, conference grew into a movement of uh, books and conferences outside of uh, Palestine and discussions and debates on social media uh, that introduced the Palestinian evangelical Christian perspective to the rest of the world. And also, uh, we were able to speak about the reality under occupation, uh, under the Israeli occupation here uh, in, uh, in Palestine. The sixth Christ at the Checkpoint conference was supposed to take place in uh, May of 2020, but of course, as a result of the pandemic, we had to postpone the conference. Uh, and so far, unfortunately, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, our land is not yet open to visitors from outside uh, uh, the world. We don't know when we will be able to hold it in person, but meanwhile, we've held a series of webinars uh, to continue the conversation. And so I encourage you to keep posted uh, on the Bible College's website and the Christ at the Checkpoint website uh, to see about when the next conference will take place in person. We hope that you will be able to uh, be with us. Webinars are great, uh, but there's nothing like coming to Palestine and seeing uh, with your eyes the reality here, seeing the separation walls, seeing the checkpoints, the Israeli settlements, and meeting people on the ground, and more importantly, uh, worshiping with Palestinian Christians in churches uh, as well. Uh, and uh, until that moment, we also encourage you to visit our website, uh, Christ at the Checkpoint, or to go to our YouTube channel. There are plenty of resources, plenty of videos. All the lectures from the previous five conferences are available uh, for you to listen to and, uh, and learn and hopefully join in this important conversation. Well, I hope that the, the information we provided were informative. Uh, again, you know, we uh, worked hard on arranging this when uh, Byron and Janet, uh, or Janet and Byron began uh, discussing with me this uh, webinar. Actually, it was a while ago, maybe three months ago, Janet, I can't remember. But, uh, you know, we had to really uh, see what's the best uh, kind of like snapshots or uh, things that we can provide at least for you, um, especially uh, Mennonite Church Canada and their context so that at least you will get uh, not just a glimpse but more of a deeper i would say understanding of the issues uh, whether at a, an academic level we're working with or uh, the other issues we kind of like uh, uh, had to struggle with and provide and uh, you know share our good news because to be honest with you I mean, um, despite of everything around us, I think God had done a marvelous things through Bethlehem Bible College. So um, I want to thank this. These are I'm not going to share any more videos. I do have more, but I want to interact with you and and give the platform for uh, Byron and Janet to basically uh, see what we can answer from the questions that are there and be able to kind of like interact with you uh, within the next ten minutes or so that we have together. Thank you so much, uh, Jack. Uh, both of these programs that were just featured, the Peace Studies Program and the Christ at the Checkpoint, I think have a lot of interest for Mennonite Christians here in North America because of our, our peace uh, emphasis as, as, a, as a, one of the historic peace churches. And um, we do have one question uh, in the chat. Uh, are there Israelis who take the Peace Studies Program? And, and are you able to get Palestinians and, and Israelis together uh, to talk about peace within their own context. Is, is that part of the program? 
the sad, uh, the sad reality is that we are not able to bring them together now uh, because of, of, of the situation. Israelis are not allowed, actually, or Jews in particular, to come into Bethlehem. Uh, there are, I'm not sure at this program, I think I've heard there is one Israeli is taking it, uh, the, the course, but it is open for uh, Israelis who can communicate in English. It's online, you know, we will not forbid anyone to take it. Actually, we would, would love to include uh, Israelis to uh, to be part of this. Um, feel free to put your questions in the chat. Uh, there's um, uh, some words of affirmation here uh, as well um, that you can read. Uh, I would just... Uh, Perhaps add a question about both of these peace programs. Uh, do you does the college experience harassment from uh, people who are uh, on the other side of the political questions in terms of the occupation and uh, defending the state of Israel and so forth? Is Bethlehem Bible College seen as as troublesome in that se in that sense? Yeah, well, this is a very hard question because sadly, uh, sadly speaking, it's those that, uh, you know, I, I don't say bad things, but uh, basically we, we, we get attacks. I mean, we get attacks. Uh, so a lot of these attacks are actually from Christians. It's not, uh, you know, it would be understandable that the, if these attacks are from non-Christians who basically have a different uh, world view, religious view, political view, uh, but it's Christians, you know, Christians who claim to be, some of them are actually Christian leaders or pastors or, you know, uh, you know, it, it's really heartbreaking to be honest with you, to see uh, that you are being attacked because of your, uh, uh, it's not only your theology, I mean, for who you are. I mean, being Palestinian is not a charge, you know, when uh, any of us is sharing his or her own experience, you know, we're not, sometimes we don't have to go into politics to kind of like share what's going on the ground, just sharing our own experiences. And even sharing our own experiences, you get charged or you get kind of like attacked because of this. How is it then if you are talking about the injustice that uh, is on the ground, uh, the apartheid wall that is, is being built, or the treatment of the, you know, Israelis with the Palestinians, or the confiscation of land, or you know, all the other issues that Palestinians are suffering from because of the Israeli occupation? So uh, yes, you know, uh, it's mainly from those. Uh, you know, uh, we don't get attacked, for example, from Muslims or regular Jews. It's basically those who either politically or theologically don't agree with us. And some of those attacks are quite uh, nasty. You know, we had people writing to our supporters to stop supporting us, for example. We had people uh, even threatening our supporters not to support us. I mean, just uh, just the... the uh, uh, you know, how low, you know, sometimes uh, Christians could get to, you know, in terms of attacking each other is really, uh, is not a good story to tell, to be honest with you. And uh, uh, sadly, you know, we had to move on and sometimes we lose supporters because of our views, God provides others. Uh, friends, you know, say we don't want to be your friends, you know, others come on, on board and support us or pray for us. Thank you, Jack. Uh, that's uh, uh, another reason I think why our partnership is so important here to uh, to to pray for you. And uh, as you said, uh, a lot of people, as Munter uh, said, uh, many people in the world don't even realize that there is a, a Palestinian Christian community. Uh, uh, we're almost out of time, but I'll just uh, uh, ask this one last question about uh, um about uh, Muslim Palestinians and uh, your neighbors uh, are, are largely Muslim. Are, are some of them uh, part of the peace studies program? Uh, have you been able to reach out to them uh, in your programs? Well, they are welcome. Uh, some of the uh, courses have a Christian turf. Actually, I have Beverly here with me. Beverly is on our board uh, in our Hope Outreach Canada. And she's actually taking this class on peace studies. And, not sure of all the students that are taking if there's any Muslim in the class, but uh, they are welcome if they want to. I mean, in the past courses, actually half or few of the students were Muslims. Uh, in this new program, I have no idea if there is any Muslims uh, because it does have a Christian turf to it. Uh, Beverly, uh, are you able to unmute or can I uh, uh, just well, we'll give you a few seconds, 30 seconds, uh, you're unmuted. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not aware of any Muslim students um, in the peace studies course, but of course, from my experience in volunteering at the college, uh, we had a, a lot of uh, Muslim students in our um, English classes. So there's a lot of interaction and even uh, some that um, were taking the theology courses. Um, uh, I, I recall one young lady um, because she wanted to learn more about Jesus and uh, really did learn. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is definitely a, a lot of interaction, but in the peace studies program right now, I'm not aware of any. They're mostly um, um, internationals uh, with a Christian background. I think we're gonna have to leave it uh, there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, we're, we're right on uh, the, the hour here and uh, I wanted to leave a, a moment uh, for Jeanette to, uh, to kind of close us off. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, for those who want to stay on after that, the line will be open and we can uh, have a bit more conversation if you like. So Jeanette, are you ready? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sarah, for this, uh, this time together. This was really rich. Uh, every time we have uh, an interaction like this, I learn more about the college and more about the situation for Palestinian Christians. And um, it, does, it does move me to, to prayer, as you've asked for many times. Um, I um, heard recently from uh, someone who said that they pray best when they're writing a check. And I think that that is one way of prayer that we can, uh, that we can also participate in. Um, as Mennonite Church Canada International Witness, we're really pleased to be able to partner with Bethlehem Bible College. As you can tell from the description here, they really are in a very unique place. Um, they're uniquely placed as uh, I think a gift from God in the region and also to the rest of us. If you go on their website, um, their general website, there are so many resources that, I uh, just put it in the chat, that you can use in your local congregations. There are um, uh, study helps for, 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 for pastors. There are um, you can take Arabic classes. You can uh, be part of the peace studies as uh, Beverly even from uh, overseas. And um, there are really a lot of a lot of things on there, lectures and different things in the in the media department. Even small little bits that you can use as um, sermon illustrations if you're if you're preaching in your congregation. So do explore the website and see and see what's there. There's a lot for us to to learn and to use. Um, in terms of giving, uh, Mennonite Church Canada is, is pleased to be able to partner with Bethlehem Bible College in this. A gift uh, designated to Bethlehem Bible College given at your local church, your regional church, or directly to Mennonite Church Canada will be um, passed on to them for use in uh, student scholarships and in uh, supporting the, the work of the college. As um, uh, Pastor Jack was saying there is um, really a lot of influence that goes beyond Palestine to a larger area in the Middle East, and it is a very, very unique place. Um, so I would encourage you to pray and to also pray with your checkbooks. Um, let's close this time in uh, prayer for Bethlehem Bible College. I just want to offer a short prayer. and. Um, then uh, if you are able to stay on or would like to stay on for a little bit more conversation, um, you are welcome to do so. Let's pray together. Creator God, we thank you for your gift of your son Jesus in this world. And I pray that you would bless the teaching, bless the place of Bethlehem Bible College. I pray that you would, you would be with their faculty, their students, especially in this very difficult time of COVID, as they see so many around them unemployed, really struggling for daily, daily needs. It's overwhelming to think about um, 
all that they are, are dealing with on a daily basis. I pray that you would give them strength, give them peace and wisdom to know how to follow you in this difficult time. I thank you for the witness of the college, for the courses, and for the light that they are in their community, and that they would be able to be salt and light um, for, for a long time, that you would give them the ability to be sustainable for a long time. Thank you, Lord, for your um, gift to us of being able to participate, to be partners in this ministry. And I pray that you would uh, go with us now today as we have spent this time together. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, Byron, I'll turn it back to you for more questions if, if anybody would like to stay on. Yes, feel free if you have uh, other things to move on to, but uh, um, we're here and uh, we, I'm sure we could spend another hour to just uh, finding more and more about uh, uh, Bethlehem Bible College. I, I put into the chat a link to our Mennonite Church Canada uh, Palestine Israel Network page where we have information there. Uh, it's... Um, we update it from time to time, uh, but there is uh, a link there to how you can uh, uh, contribute funds uh, through Mennonite Church Canada, um, and also find out a little bit of what our network does. We 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 uh, are involved in supporting Mennonite, the Bethlehem Bible College, but we also do other work of advocacy with our uh, politicians and uh, partnering with other groups as well. Uh, so you'll get a sense of that by uh, browsing through that website. So, um, yeah, for those of you who want to stay on, if there are further questions, uh, uh, Jeanette, can we just open this up to be a little bit more conversational and you can, uh, you know, maybe unmute yourself and ask your question. Maybe that's uh, the way to do it. Uh, I hope we got through all the questions uh, in the chat here. Um, I, I'm not sure whether we got to the bottom of the questions about relating to the uh, Muslim community around you. Uh, that might be something to explore. Um, but uh, perhaps you have other questions. So, uh, you know, maybe just uh, just unmute yourself and ask it. Is that 